Uh, good uh, good afternoon or good morning wherever you are in the world. Uh, this is Rodney Swigler speaking, uh, the director for the WADA Africa office. Um, if you are on the line and we're expecting around about 34 of our colleagues from all over Africa to join us, welcome to the first of uh, a series of webinars that the Africa office uh, is planning. Uh, no surprise, we decided to uh, to do an education um, focus first um, uh, because uh, we know that education is the bedrock of our anti-doping efforts. Um, as I mentioned, this is the first in a series and we are hoping that with your feedback and your comments on this session that we can schedule and plan uh, future webinars where we can discuss issues such as uh, results management, we can discuss um, the therapeutic use exemption process, we can discuss preparations for major events, we can discuss um, um, the development of anti-doping in general. Um, so we are hoping that following this session, please submit your, uh, your queries. Of course, this webinar comes uh, at a time when we are all busy preparing for the African Games, uh, the, one, the biggest event in the region, uh, which will take place in, in Rabat next month. Uh, and I'm sure that many of you are involved in t team preparations at this stage. Of course, education is an integral part of team preparations, and we are certainly hopeful uh, that our intervention here today will give you some ammunition uh, to take with you as you uh, work with your teams, assist the team management in preparing, uh, and generally speaking, ensure uh, that anti-doping is on the agenda for your team leaving for Rabat. We hope that you will find this intervention uh, useful and informative. Um, we are also hoping that you would, you would submit uh, your questions, your queries, uh, and we will try and, 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 uh, and respond to as many or all of them uh, during this session. But of course, we can also do it outside of the session uh, if you then, then um, contact us. Uh, the program for today, we will, uh, following these words of introduction, I will hand over to our regional uh, office manager, Sameh El Rey, um, to take you through a presentation on the type of tools that WADA has developed to assist you, our stakeholders, um, and following which we will then uh, allow you to submit your questions and we will try and run through the questions and answer as many as possible. As uh, we now prepare for Summit to, to deliver the presentation, I do want you to start thinking about a few things. Uh, first of which is um, um, the African content, uh, the African continent is vast, very uh, uh, linguistically, socially, culturally diverse, and it would be good to hear your views and on how we can actually use this diversity as a tool uh, in developing and implementing anti-doping education programs. I would also like you to start thinking about how your organization uh, can promote uh, some of these uh, programs that will be presented to you today, um, and then also your suggestions on what else WADA can do to assist our stakeholders. So with those introductory comments, I hand over to, uh, to Same that will take you through the presentation. Thank you, Rodney, for that very profound and complete uh, introduction of what we'll be going through today. As Rodney said, this is the first webinar for education today. Tomorrow there is one for French-speaking ADOs. Going forward, we hope to have more of these uh, experiences and endeavors in the future which is why it is essential that we get feedback from you, not just on the content, but overall on the structure, on how useful it was, on what we can improve on in the future. As we're saying, this is a work in progress, so we are honored that you are joining us here for the first one, and hopefully for many more to come. Now, um, as you can see in front of you, the table of contents will be, we will just start on the overall general definition of education and anti-doping, where it comes from, um, what are the documents that make it that education is mandatory for anti-doping organizations? Who is responsible for education and its implementation? 
WADA's role and what it provides in order for you to develop your own and implement your own education program, as well as the resources that are available on WADA's online platform, Adele, as well as different others. Now, if we start, uh, of course, as uh, ADO administrators, you are all aware that the 2015 World Anti-Doping Code is sort of the cornerstone or the constitution of the anti-doping movement. It is a code that is signed by all anti-doping organizations, and it specifies in its Article 18 that education is mandatory. Now, education is both information and education regarding anti-doping awareness and anti-doping activities. Now, the primary goal for education is not just to prevent intentional doping and raise awareness as to its dangers, but also to prevent unintentional doping. A lot of the cases that come before us are for the athletes who are not aware of the prohibited list, are not aware of what a substance might or ca might cause or induce in their bodies or might pop up on an unexpected test. This is why programs should not only be about awareness, but they should also be values-based. Athletes should learn, and not just athletes, but everyone and members of their entourage and their members of the sports movement should be aware that cheating and illicit advantages do not only harm themselves and their health, but also harm the, the competition, the free and the fair competition that should be preserved in all sporting activities. Now, education programs should not only be focused on athletes, as we say athletes are certainly a, the most important link, but also on their personnel, on coaches, on doctors, on administrators, on everyone. That's why WADA provides resources for everyone and modules and courses, not just for the athletes, but for everyone influencing them. Now, as you are aware, the code is currently being revised. The final version should be adopted in the World Conference of the Doping and Sport that should take place in Katowice in Poland this November, and the new version, the 2021 code, should come into effect on January 1st in 2021. Now, as we said, the code can be considered the constitution and the cornerstone, but is not the only resource, as it is supported by other resources such as the international standards. Now, currently, WADA has six international standards, the international standards for testing and investigations, the international standards for laboratories, the international standards for TUEs, therapeutic use exemptions, the international standards for protection, for protection of privacy and personal information, the international standards for code compliance by signatories, as well as the prohibited list. Currently, WADA is developing two more additional international standards, the international standards for results management and for education. Now, a draft has already been published and circulated in December of last year, 2018, and now the adoption is expected of these international standards in Katowice as well on the 5th to the 7th of November, 2019, which is why your feedback is most important to know just how to develop this document and as well as your participation in the World Conference. Now, this international standard should come into effect as well as the code on January 1st, 2021, and it will be mandatory as is the case for all other international tenders for all code signatories. Now, the, essentially, the focus of the international standard for education, much as the case with results management, is not to have one single approach for all countries. As Rodney said, Africa and the world, for that matter, is very vast linguistically, culturally. There are multiple ways to have a successful and efficient education program. What the international standard aims to do is to have a harmonized approach so that every ADO in the world can have a bare minimum and an essentially harmonized approach to have its own education program that can be fitted into its own cultural and linguistic needs. Now, other than the international standards in the code, there are the guidelines. The guidelines are not mandatory for code signatories, but they provide assistance and guidance on just how and what is expected of each and every ADO. Now, they are there to assess and design and help plan and implement and evaluate all of your anti-doping education programs. An updated version of the guidelines is also currently being developed, and it should come into effect before the new International Standards for Education, as well as the code in 2021. Now, as we said earlier, education is not just about the athletes. Athletes are certainly a very important link in this chain, but there are also different other ones that can be as harmful if not properly sensitized and educated as to the dangers and harms of anti-doping, not just for the athletes, but for competition generally. There is an old cliche in anti-doping that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And if any of these links is not as strong as the athlete, then the athlete is himself and the movement is vulnerable. There are courses for doctors, for coaches, for parents, for lawyers, for agents, for educators, 
for everyone just to be sensitized on just how harmful doping can be and how we can use every ADO's into the anti-doping education program to prevent doping generally and for everyone. Now a question is very important here is who is responsible for education? Many think it is WADA that is supposed to have an education program for all its ADOs. This is not the case. Article 18 specifies that every signatory shall within their means and scope of responsibility in cooperation with each other plan, implement, evaluate and monitor information, education and prevention program for doping-free sports. So essentially every single of our, one of our 307 code signatories is liable and responsible to have their own education anti-doping program. They are supposed to plan it according to their needs and implement it according to their responsibilities. Now, on a national level, and I know we have a lot of administrators with us, two signatories are available, either a national anti-doping organization, a fully-fledged NADO, or a National Olympic Committee in case this NADO has not yet been established. Now, since this webinar is essentially for African countries, it is important that we state that currently we have 26 established NADOs and 28 NOCs operating as NADO. It should be also noted that some of these NADOs have been established and have been have signed the, the, the World Anti-Doping Code, but they are not functional. Therefore, the NOC still has to take responsibility for a lot of their activities. Now, the International Center for Education will highlight in detail each and every responsibility for each and every ADO. Now, the National Anti-Doping Organization, according to Article 7.2.1, each national, uh, national anti-doping organization shall be the authority on education as it relates to clean sport within their respective country. NADO should support the principle that an athlete's first experience with anti-doping should be through education rather than doping control. The ISC then goes on to state that each NADO shall devise an education program for those under their authority and who are there in their education pool. The NADO shall document an education plan to demonstrate how their education program will be implemented and monitored and they should evaluate their education programs annually. Now this essentially means that every single NADO that is established should have an education plan that is foreseen for the coming year and it should have as an objective that every athlete is able to access anti-doping knowledge and anti-doping education, not through testing, but through education. Now, the NOC has a very particular role, whether that be that there is an actually an effective and efficient active NADO in, in place or not. Now, if there is a NADO, then the NOC is liable for supporting this NADO to have its own anti-doping education program, as well as other anti-doping aspects. This is highlighted in Article 7.5.2, that if an ADO should exist, then the NOC should cooperate with this NADO to have not just education, but all anti-doping programs. Now, in case an ADO does not exist, which, as we said, is the case for 28 African countries, then the authority on education, just as the case with all other anti-doping programs, relies solely, lies solely on the NOC. Now, there are also other signatories not on the national level, but on the international level, such as international federations. And these are also mentioned in the ISC. The ISC states in Article 7.3.1 that all international level athletes should find an, a, an adequate and an efficient anti-doping education program that is implemented towards their international level athletes. The international uh, federation should also devise an education program that should have as a goal and an objective to provide anti-doping education knowledge for all the international level athletes. Now for major event organizers, they also are liable according to the new international standards for education. They need to have an effect, an anti-doping education program during all major events that are organized. We have recently discussed at the anti-doping uh, forum here in uh, Cape Town for African countries that all major event organizers need to have a component in their bidding files regarding to, uh, regarding to anti-doping education and anti-doping in general. Now, generally, for Africa, we have different regional anti-doping organizations. We have the Zone 1, Zone 2 and 3, Zone 6, Zone 5, and the Indian Ocean Rados. From our 58 African countries, 48 are RADO members, while only 12 do, are not affiliated with an RADO. Now, the RADO is not a code signatory. Therefore, they are not liable, according to Article 18, to have their own education program. Even though that is the case, they are still liable to help and assist all their country members 
in order to have and to implement and develop their own national level anti-doping education program. Now, Article 7.6.1 of the International Standards for Education will highlight effectively that role is that the RADO is supposed to support all of the member countries in order to develop and implement their own anti-doping education programs. Now, WADA also has a role in this. WADA is not just a regulatory body, but it also has a role in order to assist and support all of the ADOs to develop and implement their own anti-doping education programs. Now, as a regulatory body, WADA is supposed to ensure that an education program is applied, such as the case with all other anti-doping organizations and such as the case with all other anti-doping aspects through the code compliance uh, monitoring process. But also, WADA provides tools and the modules in order for all ADOs to have access to them in order to develop and implement their own nationally based education programs. Now, WADA has different resources that are available, including the outreach program, which you might be familiar from, from different uh, African major events. Also, we provide the guidelines and information, which we stated before are currently under review. We provide different books, games, and videos that enable you to access education in uh, anti-doping. We provide the toolkits, which we'll be learning about three, uh, shortly, and the e-learning platform, which is Adele. Now, WADA provides the at -a -glance series. This series provides a condensed look at different topics from the anti-doping program, such as the Athlete's Guide, Whereabouts, TUEs, and the Doping Control Process. These are easy to produce. They're available in different languages, such as French, English, Spanish, which are the main languages in Africa. And they're also accessible and very helpful in order for different types of athletes or administrators just to have a condensed and an overview look of the anti-doping department. Now, if you look at the right side of your screen, there are different documents that are available for you to download, including the education resources brochure that briefly explains Adele, the different modules, and the resources that are available for you to consult. You can download that at any time. Now, for the e-learning platform from WADA, which is Adele, which a lot of you are members of, Adele has been established in January 2018, and it is an online platform offering courses on clean sports, anti-doping, and it is free of charge for all users. Courses or resources are tailored for athletes, coaches, doctors, administrators, or anyone interested in anti-doping. Now, depending on the type of profile you create, you will have the, the modules and the courses that are most fit to your type of profile as the default courses for you to take. Now, there is a small here, Adele enables you to access all eight of its courses. Alpha, which is available for athletes. Coach True, which is available for all coaches. Parents Guide, which is available for uh, parents, the ABP Athlete Biological Passport uh, module, which is available exclusively for, and, uh, for athletes biological passport experts and uh, people affiliated with the Athlete Passport Management Unit, APMU, the Information Security Awareness Course for Everyone, ISAFE, the University Textbook, as well as the Sports Physician's Guide. Now, creating an account on Adele is very simple. This is a small tutorial on how to do it. We'll just need to press register. Choose a username, indicate an email address, a password, some information. Now, every information that has a red asterisk next to it is mandatory. Others, such as federation organization or the athlete ID, are not. But if you have them, then it would help us a lot. You will need to read through the terms and conditions, like you do for every website you sign up for. And then Verify you're not a robot and the account would be created. Now, just to have an overview of Adele, Adele provides different courses, such as we said, the eight aforementioned courses. Just when you go to the home page, you will find the courses. As we said, depending on your type of profile, it will be popping up directly. Now, Alpha is available in different languages, including English, French, and Spanish. iSafe is available in English and French. ADO Kickstart, which perhaps is the most important for administrators present in this webinar, is available now in English and French. And you will also get the latest news from social media, whether that be WADA's Twitter account or the Facebook page. You'll see some related to Africa. You will also see on the right side of your screen, Speak Up, which is the platform, as well as the WADA quiz. 
you might be familiar from it from some of our outreach programs at the major events. It is very simple and easy to take and available for athletes and anyone interested in anti-doping. Now, ADO Kickstart, as I said, might be the most important one to take uh, during this webinar as it's mostly centered for administrators. ADO Kickstart, is uh, you need to just create it uh, one registering, then send us an email indicating the organization you're affiliated with as well as your position. And after a simple process of verification, we will then create an ADO Kickstart admin account for you. Now, when entering, when consulting your library, you'll find the different courses that are available to you in different languages. And once you choose ADO Kickstart, you will need to subscribe to the course if it's not by default subscribed. And then by pressing Start Lesson, you will find different information on all the important uh, elements of an anti-doping program. Education, INI, TUEs, testing, results management, privacy protection, and ADAMS. You will find all the necessary information there for any anti-doping organization administrator. Now you can also use ADO Kickstart to help some of the uh, the, uh, the users that are affiliated with your jurisdiction. Now once choosing your password, you can then help them reset their password. They will just need to indicate their username and then indicate the password. Log in. You will then you go to user admin, which will show you all the users within your jurisdiction. Now this is of course confidential information, so it is blurred out, but you will see all of the users within your jurisdiction on that list. If you're also looking for a particular user, you can go in and choose from the search bar, switch to users, And in that case, search for, for example, WADA for me. Press on search. And then find the profile you're looking for. This is, in the case, my profile. And find the, all the necessary information that you need. Now, you can also use it, as I said, to change someone's password. If they require assistance, they will just need to indicate their email address, which is for me, for example. Once that is done, they will just need to check this box. And they will receive on that email address information how to create their new password. If someone, if a user also requires that you change the password for them and create a temporary password, you can do so by going on to users, searching for the user you require. For example, I'm going to search with my first name, Samia. choose it, and then go into edit. Go down here and create a temporary password, whichever it can be. It just has to be compliant with the requirements. And then once that is done, I have to confirm it down there. And if the passwords match, which they have to, then you can just go down and save. Then the user would get a temporary password that you have chosen for him. And then once he logs on, he can change that and create a password for himself. Now, you can also use Adele to create reports for the users within your jurisdiction. You just have to go into stats. Go down and press export in Excel. Now, depending on the level of data and the just the quantity, it could take a few moments. But that would then create an Excel file with you containing all the information for all the users within your jurisdiction. The file will be downloaded once it is done. Now, you can also render reports based on a country or a sport in particular. You will have here the list of all your countries within your jurisdiction, as well as all the sports. 
Now, for example, I would choose Egypt, my own country, and here click filter. And also, depending on the amount of data, it would take a few moments. But then it would pop up. And you will have all the information for all the athletes or the administrators within your jurisdiction, all the, uh, the courses that they have completed and all the necessary information. Now, you can also go by sport. For example, we can choose a sport such as boxing, filter, same process. It will take just a few moments. And then once that is done, you will have all the data for all the athletes within that sport. Once that is done, you can press reset and go back to the normal procedure. So now, as we indicated, this is perhaps the most important part, the question and answer session. Um, we would like to have all of your input, just um, not now we can start with uh, regarding the content, regarding Adele, regarding the international standards, just any question of the roles and responsibilities. But generally, if there are any questions as well regarding the format and the organization of this webinar, any comments, we will very much appreciate your feedback. We thank you for this participation and we'll just now be looking at some of the questions that we have received. For example, how can Dorado assist uh, with the implementation program for a member country? Now, as we said that Dorado is not a code signatory, therefore they are not liable to develop and implement their own education strategy or education program, but they are reliable, according now to the IST, which will come into effect in 2021, to assist all of their member countries in the development and in the training of all education officers. Now, we know that all the African RADOs are currently have process for always training continuously education officers who will be active in their member countries. That way, the RADO can train these officers who can then provide the activity and provide input in the education plans that are developed for the uh, member countries' own national level education programs. Now, amongst the other questions that can be um, that we have received, um, if whether or not it's mandatory for some athletes to over to undergo certain education programs before participating. Now it depends, of course, on the competition, but multiple uh, major event organizers make it mandatory for athletes participating in an event to have at least gone through an education session with the NADO of their country. Now it is very important for all athletes to be sensitized, as we said it's more important and it's easier for athletes to be aware of the anti-doping program through education than through testing, which is why athletes arriving at major events organizer and learning for the first time through uh, about anti-doping through the outreach program or through testing should very well be avoided. We need to have education programs for all the NADOs and for all the RADOs to assist their member countries with implementing these programs. That way it can be assure that all athletes have a minimum and bare minimum knowledge of anti-doping in general, of the procedure, of the prohibited list, of the everything of the TUE process, which is a very important thing to have here in Africa, which also can be discussed further in further webinars, just how everyone needs education regarding that and sensitization. Um, but that is one of the most important things. Now, there is another question. Can we get more material for the outreach program? Now, the outreach program, as we said, this is something that WADA provides at major events and sometimes at even sub-regional events in order to have to reach the largest number of athletes possible. They already have the playthrough quiz, which we explained before, and it's usually um, accompanied by prizes and trophies to help engage athletes to come and participate. It provides a minimum knowledge of everything, but uh, and also some of the material is available just for the brochures and the uh, At A Glance series, I believe was available at the last time. So the the maximum amount of of education of sensitization that can be done during that the games period, which is ten days or two weeks maximum, is done I think through the outreach program. But it is not sufficient because not all of the athletes on a national level participate in these international events. As well as it's by then they should really have a high level of awareness regarding anti-doping. We can't wait for them to go to an international competition to just be exposed to that level. 
So yes, of course, material is available, but of course, the outreach program is not enough to have an education knowledge. If Rodney would like to weigh in on this, I would just I would just like to add that uh, of course, WADA developed the outreach model, which is available to any uh, stakeholder interested in having or running their own outreach program at their events. Um, this package is free of charge. You only need to apply to WADA for that material. Uh, and we would gladly send that uh, to you. Many of the African stakeholders have already requested uh, the outreach model, and some of them have been implemented with significant uh, successes at the event. Uh, you should just be mindful that it is almost impossible uh, in terms of, of budget for WADA to be able to provide materials uh, to everybody wanting these. That is why we develop templates uh, that can easily uh, be used by our stakeholders to replicate in their country uh, using various means. So uh, we still provide the materials, uh, but uh, um, we, we rather encourage our stakeholders to find ways uh, to develop these at the, at the local uh, level. If you are still interested in the outreach model and you have not received this previously, I do um, suggest that you uh, either check on our website, alternatively contact the regional office uh, if you are interested and we can, uh, we can then uh, try and facilitate that you, that you receive that. Yes, uh, the question on Portuguese. Portuguese is certainly a key country in the region. We know Angola, um, Mozambique, uh, um, Cabo Verde. Uh, so, so um, no, absolutely, Portuguese is one of the key languages uh, of the region. Um, and I can advise that we are currently in the process with the support and assistance of the Brazilian National Anti-Doping Organization to see or to have alpha um, and other courses translated into Portuguese. So once that is available, we will then be able to, uh, uh, to advise you and then you can access those modules in, in Portuguese. Just to clarify also, most of these translations, just as Rodney specified, are done by association with a NADO or an NOC. For example, the Brazilian NADO and has taken it upon themselves to help us translate the content and render it available. So currently, we don't have any of the major African languages on, such as Arabic, Swahili. So if any NADO um, seems to be fit to translate any of the content to that language, it would, of course, make it more accessible for their athletes. Not all of the athletes would speak these different languages that are available currently. So if any NADO can take it upon themselves to offer us and to help, and uh, we, of course, will collaborate on this to translate any of this content to any of our African languages, that would be a huge assistance. I know it's already being developed in Arabic with uh, some of the Gulf countries, and that would be a great help to a lot of Arabic-speaking countries in the region. But also, if it's any, uh, if any uh, other African languages that are essential for us and for all just athletes to be sensitized, then we would love to have the uh, ability and the opportunity to cooperate with any NADO or NOC who would be interested in this. Um, now there is a, another question. Is there a provision for a paper-based program for Adele? Um, now, un unfortunately, currently we do not have an offline version of the modules, but we are still looking into this as we are aware that internet difficulties can, of course, happen and uh, they can render it difficult to access the platform. Um, but unfortunately, everything currently is online because we have to have tracking purposes such as we just illustrated. You can have reports on your users and users within your jurisdiction, what courses they've completed, what scores they got. So in order for you to have that access, you will need to have it on an online basis. But just on an offline basis, in order to be able to maybe deliver them in sessions, that can be available. That is already available for the quiz, which is done different sessions without internet uh, utilities but as well it's um, it's it's important to have an online version but we are currently also looking into having a, an offline module just be able to be accessible for everyone there seems to be no uh, further questions um, so thank you Same, for the presentation thank you for uh, uh, for tuning in uh, to the session as we said 
for us, this is very much a trial and error um, event, and we are really looking forward to having future events. So we look forward to your further questions and your um, uh, uh, that we would gladly clarify and answer, uh, but also your proposals on how to improve. Uh, as we said, that for us is, is very important. So uh, with that, um, thank you very much for logging in. Um, we had uh, uh, almost 20 people, but we are aware that many of you are sitting around one uh, laptop, one computer in an office. So you are all very welcome, uh, and we look forward to our future engagement. Thank you very much.